G'day, comrade, and welcome to the Republic with me, GD. Welcome to our three-part series on how to set up your very first town in the Republic. In our first video, we covered how to plan out your Republic, which buildings need to be placed in range of other buildings, also whether you should be picking the smallest building, the cheapest building, or whether you should be picking something a little bit more expensive to last you a bit further into the game. We also planned out what city services required for those playing on easy and medium difficulty. In the second video, we covered how to set up your construction offices and how to optimize them if you're playing in hard and realistic mode. Also, we set up the extra city services that are required for those playing on the harder difficulties. And this being the third video in the series, we'll be setting up our logistics along with inviting people into the Republic. And of course, we're gonna be starting to turn a profit so we can continue to bankroll the Republic. So if you do like rubles, can I ask a quick question? And that is, well, can I borrow a like? I just like to borrow a like. I like to borrow a like early in the video. If you're not happy with the video, you didn't enjoy the video, didn't think it was worth your like, by all means, you can have it back. So uh, a couple of things have happened over the winter. That's definitely the wrong button. Uh, first thing is we built most of the most of the housing. It's not all built yet, but it's mostly there. Of course, nothing is turned on yet. That's going to be very, very important. And we don't have any citizens yet because I haven't invited them or any in because it's still reasonably cold. What I want to do is I want to start getting some deliveries in. So I need to bring in, well, food and clothing and electronics, also some meat. Uh, also need to get important vehicles like ambulances. And I need to get some coal delivered so we can start turning on the heating plant to make sure that nobody freezes if it gets chilly again. So with that out of the way, let's get to planning. So first thing I need to do is I need to pop over here. Oh, and I also threw in a technical office so we could get rid of some of the snow. And when they were bored and they didn't have a lot to do, we did start upgrading some of the roads to asphalt. That's entirely optional. It does make it a little bit faster to move through, but it's not critically important. First thing I need to do is I need to grab a depot. I need to grab a road depot. Road depots are very important. They let you move something out of a, well, from somewhere like a construction office into a standalone building where we can give them new orders, which is exactly what I'm going to be doing with this dump up. I don't want it being part of the construction office anymore. I want him to have a dedicated job. His dedicated mm -hmm. job is to go to the border and load me up a bunch of coal and then take the bunch of coal down to uh, this building here and drop it off and say, wait till unloaded. Now, I need to mention a few things. Uh, first off, when we're talking about coal, we're gonna be buying coal from the uh, border crossing at about $10, or oh, about 10 rubles each. If I come to here and I look at my auto purchase, because I could just auto purchase it. If you're not playing on realistic, this is an option. Uh, if I look at this, it says that I am going to be paying five rubles for one ton worth of delivery i'm also paying a little over 10 rubles each to have it delivered now i don't really want to do that and actually if i turn this up by one i'm going to pay 31 rubles for three tons worth of coal and i'm also going to be paying well another 25 ish rubles for delivery i'm pretty sure i can get it delivered here for a lot less than that so that's what we're going to be working with and that's why i'm going to be doing my own deliveries next delivery i want to set up is going to be uh the shopping center i want to make some changes in here so rather than having 30 percent of each of these in stock i want to change this to well i want to click on this which will bring up these numbers or if i control this will zero them out uh the advantage of zeroing them out is it currently means um it's trying to add up to 100 as soon as i type in the first number it's going to tell me what percentage is left over and if I set 60, 40, uh, 60, 30, and 10, that's going to set it to us to 100% total. Uh, and then I want to come to here and I want to set these to the same numbers. So I want to go to food. I want to change that to 60. I want to change clothing to 10, uh, 30. And electronics, I want to set to 10. Cool. Uh, that should be that up and running. Uh, next off, I need to buy an important vehicle, like an ambulance. Uh, they're all about the same price. They all run at like... 90 kilometers per hour, 90 kilometers per hour, 100 kilometers an hour, you're just cheaper, so I'm going to buy you. I don't really care what sort of ambulance you get, it's entirely up to you. One other thing I do want to do is we have this guy who's going to deliver fuel. I would really like it if you also delivered fuel to the clinic, so, you know, we didn't have to go and rush off to get fuel mid-emergency. And I also need to buy a couple of fire trucks. We only have two choices currently, a cheap one and a more expensive one. But they have some important stats. You have a max speed of 62, and you have a fire truck speed slash level of 23. What does that actually mean? It means you have 23 firefighters available if you have this vehicle. But this guy travels around at 90 kilometers per hour. He only has a speed of four, 
So he can't have a lot of firefighters on him, which is actually perfectly fine by me, because I actually want to make sure that he gets there in a hurry. The idea is he will hopefully go and dampen a fire before the other guy shows up and actually puts out the fire. So we also need to have some workers in there once we have some workers up, or up and running. I need to tell you to run, because that's important. And I want to also get a refrigeration truck as well, because I need to grab meat. We're going to be going to the border. We're going to be buying meat. And I'm going to be bringing the meat to the market and waiting until unloaded. Go. Now, important thing I should mention, and this is a perfect example, is this has two car parks. Two car parks means, and with the refrigeration truck sitting here waiting until it's empty, he holds 6.5 tons worth of meat. Uh, the supermarket only holds 1.25. So he's going to spend an awful lot of time just sitting here parked here, which is fine as long as you don't have an emergency. If you have an emergency and there are no parking spots left, well, the ambulance has nowhere to park to pick up people. Also means that the police have nowhere to park to, you know, get out and investigate a crime, which we don't have to worry about yet. Also means if there's a fire, well, they have um, nowhere to park the fire truck to put out the fire. So it's something you need to keep in mind that you need to try and keep one parking space free at all times. All right, last thing I need to do is I need to look at getting some people. But before I do that, I want to change the worker numbers on a lot of these buildings. So kindergarten, we have 12 staff. That's probably too many. We're going to half that down to six. Uh, the shopping center, uh, we're going to half that to 15 because I don't think I need that many people there. The school, we're going to half that down to six. Uh, the uh, headquarters, which is basically our university, we're going to cut that down to 10. The indoor swimming pool, we're going to cut that down to five. And that's about it. We're going to leave the heating plant. We're going to leave the clinic because when we invite people in from other parts of the Republic, they don't seem to be very healthy for reasons. Uh, the basketball, the volleyball, and the football field only have very low numbers worth of workers anyway, so we're not to worry about that. The, ta the House of Culture, we can half that down to three as well. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to make sure we're on Build From Resources, uh, please. And I want to add three more houses. Uh, can I put you here and here and here? Now, these are going to automatically be in range of well, our bus stop and also our trash. So that should be easy enough. We can just add that road in there to confirm. Yep, you're all in range, so I don't have to worry about you. And we're going to make sure that they're enabled so our construction officers have something to do in the meantime. All right, so with that done, next thing I want to look at is, well, setting up some profits. I want to start making some rubles. Uh, actually, no, I want to invite people in. All right, so I'm going to pause the game really quickly because I want to go through this. And it's, it's one of those important things that no, actually, there's one more truck I need, and that's garbage. Uh, can I grab technical office? Can I grab another technical office? Can I throw you here? Um, I need to have a garbage truck. I need to set you to maximum range. I need to tell you to take your garbage to the board up, and I need a garbage truck. When I say a garbage truck, I mean a garbage truck. This is going to carry six and a half tons per hit, and honestly, we're not going to be producing that much waste in a hurry. Uh, the only thing that we didn't add a garbage tip to was the heating plant the heating plant it's going to take a while to fill up six and a half tons and then because it is of the skip type the large type of that truck is fully compatible with this particular garbage bin one thing that we can do is you can filter waste so if we look at a clinic really quickly it has two different types of garbage one for normal mixed waste one for hazardous waste uh as it's an industrial building it will know how to filter waste right from square one so we can have that filtered if we look inside here, we can see I have biological, I have burnable, and I have other waste. If I gave you a filter spot for biological as well, you'd filter that as well. It's worth doing. It doesn't matter so much right now, apart from hazardous. Hazardous is the one place that matters because um, hazardous costs you an awful lot to sell at the border. So you probably want to make sure anything that outputs hazardous, hazardous waste has somewhere to put that. All right, last thing I want to do is, yeah, pause the game. Uh, it's now 20 degrees. We're in March, so it's a good time to start getting some people in. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to invite in experts. And there's no rhyme or reason to invite experts first, apart from I want to go through um, some of the quirks of the game that you might not realize. So I'm going to intentionally invite in exactly 100 people. Uh, now, with exactly 100 people, I have exactly 100 highly educated people. I did. It does cost 5,000 rubles for five immigrants from the Republic, well, other parts of the Republic. So, um, yes, it's it's not exactly cheap to get in experts, but 
when I unpause the game, we're going to see I actually have 149, 149 people. And that is because uh, I invited in 100 workers. The workers happen to have some sort of family with them. So they've invited, they've brought some uh, zero and six year olds, i.e. they're going to have to go into the kindergarten. They've also brought some 17 to 15 year olds. They'll have to go into the school and also some 16 to 21 year olds, which could go into university and ha higher education. All right, next one I'm going to do is, and that gave us an extra 50 people. Next one we're going to do is, we're going to do, uh, oh, actually, no, should also mention, uh, they come in fairly happy, fairly well satated, yep, uh, fairly alcohol addicted, fairly low on the culture, fairly low on sports, highly religious, sympathetic, um, not a lot of clothing, and I also managed to get somebody who has, um, some criminality as well, just to throw that into the mix. All right, next slot. Uh, we're going to intentionally invite in people from the Soviet bloc, okay? These are non-highly -edu non educated. Uh, they're just normal people. I'm going to invite another 100. So in that 100, I happen to get 86 that had, um, well, basic education. I happen to luck out and get 14 that had university education. These had all 100 at university education. Uh, but same story, um, fairly well satiated, fairly alcohol addicted. Health is okay, low culture, low sports, oh, really likes their religion. Uh, the clothing is about the same, and also I managed to find a criminal. Of course I did. All right, so again, if I unpause the game, we're up to 300. Okay, then we're going to do uh, one from the third world. Now, third world people, um, they don't understand the ways of the Republic. Uh, they're going to have a problem that they have basically no education whatsoever. Something you need to keep in mind, they're going to have to go to school. They're going to have to learn how to become part of the Republic. Also means they're not going to be, they're going to be of working age, but they can't do any jobs yet because they can't speak the language. So we're going to invite in uh, another hundred of these guys. And you're going to notice a couple of things about these that make them different. One, they cost dollars. I have plenty of dollars. Good way to get rid of dollars. Uh, early game, that is at least. Uh, but their happiness is low. They're satiated low. Their health is low. They're also addicted to booze. Uh, co culture, uh, sports, uh, culture and sports are low. A little bit less religious but also the clothing alone. They have everything bad going for them. Uh, so we're going to um, leave them. Oh, also average lifespan 43, 61 and 61. Yeah, they don't live terribly long either. Uh, so we sort of need to get them uh, trained up in the ways of the Republic as quickly as possible. We're going to fill out this house as well. And I'm gonna fill out this house as well from people from the Republic. So that should give us a starting block to get some people in. We're going to have to give it a day or two for it to sort of stabilize. We need to have, obviously have doctors. We need to treat some patients. We need to uh, make sure I have sellers in here. Did I forget to click OK? Oh, I forget to set that up entirely, didn't I? Yeah. I need a distribution office. I need a distribution office to have two of those. I need a distribution office to go there. I need a distribution office to pick up food, clothing, and electronics. Uh, also chemicals in the future. I need them to go there. I need to unload uh, food, clothing, and electronics. We're going to intentionally set this very low to start with. And actually, can I get a third truck? Cool. Yep, going to set that very, very low to start with. So hopefully get a delivery of each. And then... Uh, you're doing food, you're doing clothing, you're hopefully doing electronics, you are, cool. And then we're gonna set that to like 50%. Uh, yeah, 50%, cool. All right, so uh, that should get food, electronics, and other things there. They have meat, so that's something. Um, oops. Uh, but we have plenty of students at the schoolyard, uh, i.e. I don't have enough employees here. So we're gonna max this out. Uh, we need to have more people here so we don't have people in the schoolyard. These, as you can see, uh, from the fact that they're 27, year old, 27 years old, means they're actually an adult um, that sort of came from the NATO countries that needs to learn a thing or two so they can actually go to work. Uh, the other thing I need to do is, I need to turn on this button. This button's brand new as of 1.0, and it makes sure that people that are mostly on their way to university educated um, so if we look at uh, you, you have an education level of 1.1, okay? If you get to 2, you're considered university educated. But of course, you need to actually study at the headquarters to get that university education. 
So anybody who's at like 1.9 gets a place in the student auditorium over somebody who has a education of 1.8 or 1.7 or whatever it happens to be. So it sort of prefers that people that are partially educated finish their education as soon as possible rather than everybody sort of getting in a queue and mixing it all up and maybe you teach everybody just a little bit you hopefully finish teaching some people uh outright uh stop production which was the heating plant because needs full on hot water cool uh and we're now in a situation where i don't really need enough hot water hi oh, yeah, yeah people happiness is low uh why because that's the nato block yep uh kindergartens are full no but maybe uh you know what we're just gonna max you out as well you have 750 people we probably need to max that out and yeah the whole food thing well we're working on it yeah we have food there now it's fine it's fine it's sorted all right so we have people in the republic uh we need to give it a little while to stabilize i do need to go to the bus depot and i say hey i don't want passengers waiting to go places i just want workers at here at this bus stop we can set up a separate bus route to take people to like you know culture places and different towns and all sorts of different options not worried about that now might be something we do in the future but um for now i just want workers here uh we do need to finish off these buildings if we remember back to the first episode i set this to down to 10 which does mean i am going to have random workers show up at these sites to do work not just come from the construction office and as you can see this is ticking over ever so slowly yep uh because i have two people on site um this will probably have has six people on site doesn't have a crane which is unfortunate but i don't have that many cranes uh you also have a couple of workers on site and the idea is well they can just walk to a local construction site construction site and help out all right next thing i want to do is i want to set up a way to start making some profits so to do that i want to uh plan ahead um what we're going to be doing is we're going to be we are on that sort of construction okay i want to plan a cargo train station here this is important because in the future i'd like to have a train that comes from here to here unloads resources uh lets us turn those into ribbles and then takes those back to the border and sells them and does so in a very short train trip uh if i go from here to here we can make that curve yep you could build it on this side. There's nothing stopping you building on this side. It's entirely up to you. All right. Next thing I need is I need someone to store all those materials. Uh, and that is going to be in a warehouse. And I want the biggest warehouse possible. Because I did a tutorial video on this. Which I'll link up the top right hand corner. Top right. Uh, on how to make a, a grill factory. And that's essentially what I want to do. I want to turn crops into something. Crops can turn into many, many things. And crops are also very cheap. Also, they're not hard for you to start growing in the future. And they just require an all, awful lot of infrastructure set up, but then they don't require any workers. So you just need a bunch of machinery to set up uh, well, farming. And, and then you can start turning a profit that way by growing your own crops and using your own crops to make your own money. So what do I actually want to do is I want to get into clothing. The reason I want to get into clothing is if we look at the price we're just buying all our clothes for, it's one3 thousand rubles for a one ton worth of clothes i'd like to sell them at about that price too so what i want to do is i want to set up a clothing factory now clothing needs 2.4 tons of fabric to make 1.2 tons worth of clothes it needs 80 workers 80 workers we could probably afford we have currently 70 workers but um you need to divide that by three to get how many you actually have per shift so if i need 80 workers for this building i don't need 80 80 i actually need 240 yeah, 240 because i need three times that amount for because we run three eight hour shifts here in the republic what i want to do is i want to put our clothing factory right about here so it has a direct connection into this giant warehouse that we'll be using in the future and i want to make sure i can get that road out and down to here or do uh i have a uh, i have the dirt road we can just get the dirt road later if i need to all right and then i want to have a road along here okay so, uh, I want to make clothes. Yeah, clothes need fabric. Okay, so how do we get fabric? Well, it turns out to get fabric, you need to have 100 workers and then 20 tons worth of crops and 11 cubic meters worth of water with half a ton worth of chemicals and a little bit of power will get me five tons worth of crops. But I only need two and a half. But if I have five tons, well, then I could run two clothing factories. So that's going to be our plan in the long run 
to get two clothing factories up and running. For the moment, we're just going to run a fabric factory at half speed, but it does tell me some important stats. So for 20 tons worth of crops, if we look here, crops cost me 20 rubles each for a ton. So the cost there is negligible. Uh, as for the chemicals I need to actually add to the mix, I need half a ton of worth of chemicals. Chemicals are fairly expensive at 850, uh, 885 rubles. So if we call it mm, half a ton with the crops added, we'll call it about 500 rubles total cost because, well, we're going to have our own water and we're going to have uh, power is so cheap it's, it's not even going to enter in the equation. And that's going to give me five tons worth of fabric. Now, five tons worth of fabric, we double check here, it's going to halve. So I'm going to get half that amount. So two and a half tons worth of clothes. Two and a half tons worth of clothes is worth about 3,000 rubles. So this is going to be our first industry. And what I want to do is I want to put the fabric factory uh, right here, where it's plugged into the clothing factory beside it. Also, I want it plugged into the warehouse so it can bring in the crops from there. And then I want to go as... Oh, I'm going to have you facing the right way. Uh, fabric factory. I need your road to go that way. Cool. Uh, I want you popped right there. And then I want to go as far as putting another clothing factory right beside it. So that's going to be our grand plan. Now, our grand plan is going to need a couple of things. It's going to need a road to here. Here, please. Yep. Uh, it's also going to need a road to here. It's also going to have some garbage we need to deal with, uh, which means I'm going to throw a large garbage stand right here, which is going to cover all three buildings. Let me move that back a little bit. Sure. All right, and the last thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need somewhere to get workers here. Uh, this is one of those times when we're going to use the free bus stop. Why? Because I'm just bringing people here. I'm not picking up people from here, so it doesn't matter if it has a relatively low cap on the amount of people that can be standing there because the free bus stop, you can only have 100 workers waiting in line. I'm not going to have anybody waiting here because we're just going to be booting them off the bus. All right. Other things that we need to deal with is you need to have water import and then have power. So power, can I get a substation? I'm going to throw my substation right in here. Yeah, right in there. I'm not going to put in a road connection on it just yet. We'll do that actually there. We might do that there. I'm right, going to throw that in there. The other thing I need to have uh, is our clothing factory is going to our fabric factory rather it's going to take in water so it's going to output wastewater it's going to basically output sewage so i need to make sure i've hooked in some sort of sewage because i can't directly take sewage from the building unless i want to customize a truck to do exactly that which i prefer not to uh we're going to put in a sewage switch because i'm also going to put in a sewage tank uh can i put you here uh this is getting a little bit tight uh can i put you uh, let's go with here. And then can I put in a series tank? And I want you to face that way and done. All right. So, pipe wise, uh, we're going to have series tank is going to have a small pipe from as water. Uh, series tank is going to have a small pipe from there to there. Okay. Uh, from our switch where we can join three pipes together, I want to put another switch. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Where is our water? Our water's here. We want to put a switch right about here. Uh, because I have uh, multiple bits of sewage I want to deal with all at one hit. So we're going to throw you in there. Can I give you a dirt road, a dirt path uh, from there to there? All right. I want to have plumbing. We want to have a sewage. Uh, we want to have a medium tank. So we move 75 cubic meters per, well, cubic meters. That should be overkill for what we need to do. I want to plug that into there. I also want to, uh, now that we have the town up and running, this will be part of our profit-making uh, profit making mm, scenario. Yeah. Uh, we're going to put in a sewage switch uh, here. With, again, a bit of dirt road. And I want to have a, let's go with a small pipe from there to there. A small pipe move. 40-ish. From this side of town, it's probably going to be okay. From this side of town, we're going to go with a 75. The bigger the pipe is, the more expensive it is. Uh, we can see this is starting to add up real fast. And then I want to have a big pipe to go out of this switch into this switch. Uh, can I get you to go that side? No. Scroll the mouse wheel. That side? I really don't want you doing that. Uh, can I get you to go there? And then there. Cool. 
All right, so that's going to be our sewage uh, from both our industrial area. Actually, industrial area needs one more pipe. It's going to be that one. And then from there, we need to do something with it. Uh, the thing that we're going to be doing with it is we're going to have a sewage discharge, obviously. Uh, and I need to zoom in enough that I can put you on the coastline. Please find a good spot. I need to have all the blue dots at the bottom be blue and all the green dots at the back be green. Um, yeah, it's a little bit tricky to only find a spot for this. Uh, how about here? There we go. Uh, flip and dump you right there. Okay. I want to put in a dirt road so we have access and it's going to go from here to here. Because the dirt road we can travel at 35 kilometers per hour, but the footpath at the very end, I can only travel at 15 kilometers per hour. So we're gonna do that and that. All right, last thing I need to do is I need to put in the very expensive poop pipe. Uh, that is the large poop pipe uh, because it's gonna be a main outflow for the Republic. Uh, and I wanna plug that from there, okay, zoom out a bit more, to there. And actually let's do the second one. Uh, that is 2,172 work days. Um, it's also an awful lot of gravel, awful lot of boards, concrete, and prefab panels. It's very expensive, but I'm going to need it. So we're going to say okay to that. Now, I'm going to approve all this construction. It is, in theory, only 53,000 rubles, but those work days right there will kill me because that's going to be a fortune, absolute fortune in uh, foreign labor. That's if I click this button. We're not clicking that button. What we're going to do is we're going to be setting up a construction office straight away to get this done uh, and this done and this done. Uh, there, there, there. Uh, can I also uh, go to roads and can I approve those? All right, with those approved, uh, we're going to have the construction officers start doing all these road connections. And I want to give them better access, so we're going to give them a dirt road here and a dirt road here so they can get to all these different connections and get stuff built. Uh, can I get that built, that built, uh, that built? Also want to have one of these factories done and one of these factories done. Also need to bring a footpath from you to you to you to you and then need to make sure that these are all assigned again and we look perfectly good to go. All right, so the big long pipes. The big long pipes, uh, they are expensive, but um, they're mostly groundwork. So as we can see, we already have our excavator on site. This is 346 work days uh, is just groundworks and only the last 150 are not groundworks. Um, this one is 1,800 groundwork days, which means the excavator can do most of this. The last 300 or so, which is actually installing the prefab panels, uh, that part, well, that needs to be done with um, people. That's going to be the expensive part, but most of it's going to be fairly cheap because we're going to have an excav excavator to it. All right, next thing we need to do was, I need to get water. Uh, we're going to be getting water from a water, small water well. I want to put this over here. Uh, we needed quality like 35% or something. Uh, sorry, 85% or something for uh, actually making fabric. So I want to put you there. I do need a pump. Um, very, very important. Whenever you play with water, you put a pump in between pretty much two, two of anything. Uh, I'm going to plug you into there. And then I'm going to take this water pipe into here. Even this one is, you know, it's it's 250 workdays. It's not 200, 225 workdays. It's not super expensive. It's not even super expensive when you come down to rubles. Uh, and in fact, it's one of the things that we're going to be, just for time's sake, uh, probably using our rubles to pay for. Uh, meanwhile, the big longer pipes, I'd much prefer that, even if you're playing on not realistic mode, I'd prefer it if, well, the me mechanisms did as much work poss as possible so I didn't have to pay for it. Uh, we're going to set you to a high priority so everything gets delivered preferably now and the other ones we can wait on. Meanwhile, the the sewage system is going to keep dealing with the sewage system that we have over here and eventually I can get these pipes built, uh, the switches built and we can get them all plugged in but um, that's not super high priority. Uh, what is high priority is these roads. You, 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 uh, you. 
and you, and that'll do me right now. All right. So, uh, can I approve that? All right. We're going to speed along this process a little bit. Uh, first off, we're going to check on the town, make sure everything's going to plan. So you have food. Everything's fine there. You have plenty of room for more people. That's good. You have students are waiting, but I also have no highly educated people that are hanging around. So we're going to just add a little bit of extra workers here, but not too many. The kindergarten's under control as well, uh, which means we are more than capable of inviting more people in Republic. Because I have room for 80 odd people in here, uh, we're going to invite uh, 40 people from the old world. 50 it turns out. Uh, in here, we're just going to invite another 100 from the Republic. And if I look at my population stats uh, this year, we can see a massive spike where I bought a whole bunch of people. And then it's slowly gone up over time with, well, births and some immigrants that weren't paid for. Not really. Uh, we have had a couple of deaths, but not too many. But overall, the Republic's going well. We can see that people are mainly happy. Low government laws is not that I can do about. I'm able to pray in church. I don't want to do anything about. I'm able to drink alcohol. Again, I don't want to do anything about. Health, they're fairly health, uh, healthy. Their lifespan is going up. Their health change is going up. So overall, we're doing well. Uh, unemployment is mainly due to low education. Uh, but we are, again, population statistics. Uh, now look at that. There we go. Uh, we can see we are educating people slowly. And we haven't had anybody have a university degree yet. But hopefully. 1.06. Bad example. Uh, 1.8. 1.83. You should be there reasonably soon. Uh, can I increase that again? Just so we have a little bit more. And what I need to do is I need to run forward time whilst this gets built and also while um, more people into the Republic slowly. We do have, what, 10, 20, 30, 40 people potentially on job sites and I'd like to get them off those job sites and over to, well, our new production area. But um, I sort of need to wait for, do we need to wait? We're down a half a million rubles. What do you cost to buy? Uh, what do I need? Okay, hang on. What, what do I need? I need to have... I need to have a covered hull. And we need to have two of those. And... That's really about it. I need to have the sewage pipes. We can either let time pass, or we can just spend the rubles to get the get the, the video moving. Um, okay, we're gonna let them continue building for a moment whilst we talk about other things that they need to do in stage two. So, stage two of the town. Somewhere between now and 2,000 people, you need to have the prison built. You also need to have the courthouse built, and you need to have the police station built. Also, optionally, you can buy the meat, uh, build the meat storage. Therefore, the refrigerator truck would empty the meat storage rather than just have a dedicated truck sitting here. You can also start doing research if you want. It is something I highly recommend you get the uh, distribution set up and running. But to do that, you need to have, well, oh, hopefully um, more people that are educated, more people that are children who cannot study, one. Uh, yeah, more people are educated, more available workers overall before you get into education. One thing you can do, and something we should start planning for, is water treatment. Water treatment is something you do want to do, because water is um, very, very cheap to set up, uh, and very, very expensive in the long term if you keep inboarding it. So we're going to put in a water treatment uh, right here. You're set to not build, and I don't want your auto purchase either. And we're going to that button. Okay to set up water treatment. Uh, one, we need to bring in chemicals. Uh, that's pretty much all we need to do. Uh, we need to have five workers, hence I want to put it within walking range of the bus stop to make sure it always has workers no matter what. And then the only thing I need to do is I need to get water into the back of it. To get water into the back of it, if we have a look at it, it does a total maximum of 120 cubic meters worth of water per day. Uh, the water, small water well, Small water well does 70 cubic meters worth of water per pump, and we're going to be building two pumps to make sure I'm covered. Uh, can I put you 
here and here. Uh, we have two pumps now doing 94% quality water. What's going to happen is we're going to pump the 94% into here where they're going to use some chemicals in and out, bring it up to 99%, and then we can take it out and we can put it into all our different substations. So we just need to have some very simple road structure. Uh, road structure will go something like... Uh, well, actually, we're going to come off here, I think. And out to here, round to there. And we're going to plug in you and plug in you. Um, I do need to have power out here. And we're going to be putting power sort of so it reaches these guys, but only just. Uh, because anything it can reach up on the main line is probably going to be more important than, um, well, those two down there. So we're going to put you here. And you would have a simple electrical line from... Uh, here to here to here. And I just realized I didn't do that substation. I'm gonna get that substation powered up around the power line along the main road to here and then into there. Uh, can I approve that? And that one we can just build. Okay. Uh, so with power over to here, the only other things I need to do is I have some pumps. We're gonna grab a small water pump. Um, and a small water pump. Uh, actually, no, we're not going to grab a small water pump. We're going to grab a large water pump. The reason I want to grab a large water pump is the small is one in, one out. Uh, the large is three in, one out, which means I can intentionally put you, say, here, uh, plug in a footpath, and then go to plumbing. Uh, we know these guys do 70 cubic meters each, so I sort of need to use a big pipe. And if we just look on the ground, I'm going to put a big pipe in there a big pipe in there and then i'm going to have a single big pipe that goes from here to here that's going to be our water into our well treatment system uh from that i want to put in a water tank preferably right in front preferably nice and close but it doesn't have to be you can put this some distance away if you want and i put in a basic path there and then what i need to do is i need to make sure that this has pressure in it so we can use a small water pump again, um, or I can use a big one. I prefer to use a big one just in case in the future I end up with a situation where I need to have a second water treatment plant. I can then have, well, it also plugged into the same pump in the future. Uh, we just need to put you somewhere. It doesn't really matter where. Uh, sure, as long as the pipes connect. Uh, I'm gonna put you there and give you a footpath so you can actually get built. And then plumbing wise, we know that this building can output uh, 120 cubic meters. It's written on there. The question is, can I get this pipe to work? Uh, they have the pipe go underground, 38 meters. Short, it's super short, so it shouldn't matter. And then up, and then from there into there. Cool. Uh, can we approve those as well? Uh, approve. All right, the pipe is 120 work days. I can live with that. And you are, well, 17 work days. From there, the only thing we need to do is we need to put it in a water switch, which I can put literally just about anywhere. Uh, that is the in pipe, isn't it? Yes, that is the in pipe. Uh, can I put you there? And then we take a large water pipe, go from here into there. And then from there, we could take that into this uh, substation and into this substation and we'd be done. But again, this is a construction job that you can do a little bit later. Somewhere between now and 2,000 people, we can set that up. What I want to do is I actually want to get these buildings done and profitable. So can I get that, that done, that done, those done, that done, that done. Uh, and yep, yeah, people's done, suddenly start getting to work and you should be able to be built. Okay. And this is a sign, it is. Is that a sign? It is. And we put on the ground. Uh, this is missing a lot of gravel. And this is also missing an awful lot of gravel, but it does have 60 odd tons on site. Uh, can I set you? Not high, just a medium. Uh, okay, you're set to medium, you're set to medium, you're set to low. Uh, nobody's assigned to you, so we're going to do that. And they're all assigned. Alright, uh, in, the in the interest of saving some time, 
At this point, we're going to have those auto built, including their pipe. We're going to have uh, all of that auto built, and that auto built, and that auto built, and that giant pipe auto built, and that one built, and that one built, and that built. Cool. Uh, that does cost an uh, awful lot of rubles, but again, in the interest of saving some time uh, for the point of this video, I am happy to accept 50,000 rubles in foreign manpower and also an awful lot of resources just got instantly spent. But with that done, I need to set up, uh, well, you guys and also two buses. Can I get bus, 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 uh, bus? Can I get total capacity? Uh, you move at 65 kilometers per hour and carry 80 people. I want to have two of you. All right, so what we need to do is I need to make sure that you guys, which are already picking up chemicals, can now please take the chemicals to here and drop them off. Uh, you are going to have to have your drinking water supplied via truck because that's the only option I have for right now. Uh, there we go, drinking water. Drinking water is being supplied by truck and uh, one of our distribution trucks is going to take chemicals there. Next thing I want to do is I want to set you to be on a permanent route to go from the border buy crops, go to this building, uh, unload crops, and do that forever. Uh, that's the main resource I need to get in here. I also need to set you down to 50 workers, and I need to get the power done. Can I get power done? Mm, wrong button, that button. Okay, so you don't have workers, you don't have crops. Crops are on their way. Next thing I'm going to do is the buses. I'm going to have a bus go to here to pick up workers. Uh, you are just going to pick up workers. Nothing but nothing but workers, please. That top one, yep. And I want you to unload the workers at this free bus stop. And we're going to set you to go. And then I'm going to use this copy schedule button tell your friends to do the same. If I hold down control when I click on your friend, it tells your friend to get out and moving straight away. And the other thing I want to do is I want to click on the magnifying glass so I can look at the line. So I can see exactly the route they're going to take. And the answer is straight through the depot, uh, which is one way in, one way out. Take that right turn, which should be a free turn, all the way up here, at which point they're going to pop in here, drop off people, do a quick UE, and straight back out. The other thing I can do is I can turn on this line spacing. When you turn on line spacing, it means that they're going to do their very best to not all bunch up and arrive together. It means that they're going to try and space them out. So if you have 10 buses, we don't have 10 buses driving along together. They hopefully come in like one at a time and we're going to turn that on. It does mean that if they get too close to one another, one bus will end up driving along the main road at 35 kilometers per hour, which is a problem, don't get me wrong. Uh, but it's not something we can fix later when we get to it. It's not a job for right now. It's a job for a future video. All right, next thing I need to do is you're going to eventually end up closing you. So we are currently buying clothes from the border. I'd like to stop doing that. I'd like to be able to get our clothes from here instead. So I want to load clothes at 0%. Load clothes at 0%. Please tell me you didn't do that. Uh, you did. Uh, control H to make a vehicle go back to home which will also clear its orders. Okay, uh, I want you to be able to load clothes from here at 0%. Next thing I need to do is I need to have another distribution office. I also want to sell clothes. And I want to sort of keep these isolated from one another. Uh, can I get you to move to there? All right, so you are going to go to here. You're going to load clothes, and then you're going to go to here, and you're going to sell clothes. But only after we have... You're getting fuel, that's fine. Only half we have like 80% full. So you carry clothing. You carry 6.5 tons. You have an internal buffer of 7.5 tons. So once it's mostly full of clothes and we haven't picked them up and taken them to, well, our own town, we can then take them to the border and sell them. Uh, but right now you have nine workers, which is not a lot. And you have 11, 10. And we have 9% unemployment, which is some people at the university 23 for no workplace. Okay, so we need to find more people. Um, you're fine, you're fine. Babies and kitty cats, fine. We're out of NATO people, so we're going to... This one. Uh, we're going to grab... Another 50 NATO people. Uh, we're also going to grab... Another 100 just plain, simple immigrants. 
add another 100 in here. And that should be everything we need to have plenty of people waiting here to go to work. And therefore plenty of people on the bus. And therefore plenty of people getting dropped off here to work. Therefore plenty of clothes being made and us starting to make some serious ribbles. But to do that, we're going to have to wait for a little bit of time to pass. Uh, and that building is almost done. It is also done. Great. Uh, you, man of interest, 119%. Yep. I thought that might happen. Uh, we can put another substation. I could put one right behind it, but I prefer not to. Uh, we can put another one. Yeah, by any chance. I'd like to tuck them away, if at all possible. Uh, can I get that to go to there? And I can I get a power pole to go... Hmm. Power pole might be the issue. Um. Okay, let's run the power pole first. Alright, power is going to come to... Here. And it's going to come along the same route as the other one. Uh, through to here. And then through to there. Okay, now that you're there, if I put this substation in, uh, you can't try and do any sort of funny snapping things. You get nothing to snap to, because I'm literally trying to run you that far. Okay. Uh, can I get that built as well? Uh, that could get built slowly, whilst... You have 20 workers, you have 37 workers, but we have three tons worth of clothes right here. Which means I just need to wait for a little bit of time to pass. A little bit of time to pass so we get our first export. Uh, our monthly costs, we'd also have to wait till next month to confirm. So I think that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna sit, let the game run for a month. We do have one construction job happening in the background. But apart from that, all our costs should be fairly static. Uh, and I still have room for, amount of interest, uh, three flats. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six hundred people. So we're at 1300. We have enough room in what we've built so far to take us up to that 2000, which means I could get these built without a problem and then have crime and justice. Also, we get a prison up and running. If we get a prison up and running, we apply some prison buses and we take the prisoners to go work in the clothing factory as well. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're just going to sit right here and I'm going to run forward time for about a month. So here we are, 25th of June. Uh, what's that? About two weeks later. And I just saw the vehicle took took off, and this is going to be our very first export. Our very first export is going to make us 8,000 rubles. Our expenses for this month are way higher than that, but then again, I did import a whole bunch of materials to make some construction items, and a whole bunch of immigrants. Uh, with that done, I'm pretty sure by next month, we'd probably be at least at the point of breaking even, uh, but also, well, you're not running at full speed yet, and you're not running at full speed either. We still have, oh, you're finally at 50%, you're at 78, so we still have a little bit of room here. But with you geared up to full speed, as you can see, well, that number's climbing awfully fast. We make 1.2 tons per day, which means every five days, we make another eight grand. Yeah, uh, which means we should be making money fairly quickly. And what's that? Eight grand, uh, well, actually, one ton per day. Uh, if I'm selling one ton per day, I'm making 45,000 rubles per month. If I'm selling that much. Uh, but you look like you're about to max out. Um, yeah, I think we're just going to skip forward again to our very next sale. Here we go, uh, we're now on the 6th of July, and my imports for this month are 5,000 rubles, and we're about to sell 
well, 8,000 rubles worth. So there is my very first profit of 4,000 rubles. Yeah, now, a uh, couple of things I should note uh, as we've run forward in time a little bit. I have 14% unemployment. Uh, 33 are low educated. They obviously need to go to school a little bit more. Uh, they're the dumbest of the bunch, but we also have due to small child. So that implies that you're maxed out. You look to be maxed out. Yeah. Uh, so I need to have more people operating a kindergarten, which will happen over time. Uh, as I get more workers actually going to the kindergarten rather than going elsewhere, that'll fix itself, hopefully. Uh, also due to no workplace. So I have another 60 people that have nowhere to work, which is a bit of an oxymoron if I have a situation where the kindergarten's not fully staffed. Let's leave that right there. Uh, you are not fully maxed out yet. You're running fine as well. You actually have extra people that are looking for, you know, way to get education. Also, the higher I have educated people. So if I have, do I happen to have, oh, uh, let's pause the game, you. You, uh, yeah, I'm not pronouncing your name. Uh, I'm not pronouncing your name either. Uh, if I have highly educated people, uh, they have, uh, and they're working in somewhere that doesn't need something highly educated, they end up being extra productive at that job. Unfortunately, you're not a very happy person. I mean, it turns out we have a number of very unhappy people. Starving, lack of meat, trick alcohol, crime. Okay, everything's going wrong. Uh, I'm willing to bet that's just because I artificially sped up the time. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, but if we have highly educated people in some of these jobs, they become more product productive. So I can actually have extra babies being able to supervise in the kindergarten. So what I do want to do is I want to keep expanding these numbers as I keep seeing students down here. The other thing I want to do is uh, we have a situation where I can actually double the production here because we do have spare fabric right here. Uh, you have a decent amount of fabric right here. I could actually start building the very next building to start getting some extra clothing being made. One thing I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to take this up in workers to 60, just have a few spares so I can start filling up this warehouse because I can also sell fabric. It's going to be a whole lot less profitable to sell off the excess fabric. In fact, it might be even a little bit negative. Uh, but if I fully stock this, I can then build the second clothing factory and start making some profits there. Uh, but with us making some money, and well, definitely being able to turn a profit, I think this is where we're gonna end this particular series. There is definitely more to do, you know, as said, we have a heating plant that needs to go somewhere, but um, we don't need that yet. And in fact, uh, you are running anything but max capacity. You're good to about 15,000, 15,000, 2,000 people. Yeah, you're sort of in the same era as everything else down here. Uh, we, you won't tell me how many, how much your support to you built. That's right. Uh, you do have a hot water tank capacity of, what was it, 450? Uh, 450 cubic meters. And if I, if you're at all curious, you're at all worried, you just build a heat exchanger. If the heat exchanger is put down, it'll give you the stats. If they happen to be the same as this, so if they happen to be 150%, that is, well, potentially getting very, very close to the maximum of the, uh, hot water capacity of the heating plant at which point you can then go and worry about building the big one and running a heat pipe all over here they are going to be expensive but i start off with hard money super hard money and well i've turned a profit within my first year on a very very limited account so with this tutorial video out of the way i do invite you to you know leave that like that i asked whether i could borrow before also at the same time if you want to see more tutorial videos like this by all means hit the subscribe button and i will remind you once more that there is a link down in the description, also in the pinned comment below, to the earlier videos in this series, along with, well, the Gruel Factory. And this is just the start of the Gruel Factory. We, well, we can and will be expanding this out, or should be expanding this out, to include a second... second clothing factory, also a alcohol factory, and a food factory, and also a... a livestock farm, and finally a slaughterhouse, so you can start making your own meat. And with all those products there, it basically negates a lot of your imports. Um, if I look at my imports this month, uh, imports, um, it's food, it's crops, it's water. Again, water would go away after we get uh, this up and built, having our own treatment plant. We will be having a little bit more chemicals, 
but water's not too much of an issue. Power's not too much of an issue. Our biggest ones at the moment is, well, food and crops. Every single time we import crops, we make a profit, so don't matter. Every single time I import chemicals, currently I make a profit, so don't matter too much. But um, as long as we're not constructing anything, because that's where our big costs are right now. Uh, also, clothes, when I imported clothes to set up the factory, that, uh, set up the food market, that didn't help. But um, they're now negated because we're making our own. Anyway, with all that said and done, like I said, I'm going to leave this video here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Do recommend you check out the Gruel Factory down in the description below because yeah like i said it's very very profitable i think it's about 150,000 rubles by itself from just crops that's an awful lot of rubles from just buying in some crops and applying a little bit of labor anyway i'll leave it here thanks for watching see you next one bye